Quicker than a momo, there's no sense for me to quit What you say, we don't know, I'm just trying to reach my goals Heard you snitching, saying it so, you can't hang with me no more What's up y'all, Christopher Dexter and I'm back with another amazing video man Now today, we got Detroit's number one most notorious hitman The untold story of Nate Boonecraft Uploaded by Mogul State of Mind uh, 10 months ago and it already has 1.8 million views so uh i've been seeing this dude on tiktok too so i'm not i'm not a stranger to who he is but i haven't seen any videos like about him i haven't been like you know tuning in but we're gonna go ahead and see what's going on so without further ado let's go ahead and get started all right here we go return of the return of the Hey, hey, hold up, hold up. All right, here we go, yo, yo, yo. What up, though, man? I have it's an old man, right mobile there. state of mind, the man, the myth, the legend, the, one of the probably most prolific, shadowy figures in Detroit history. Um, people know you from running. If you ever heard of this story, you've known from running with the crew, best friends, doing your own thing. Welcome to Mogul State of Mind, Nate Boone Craft. How you doing, my Best guy? Friends. I'm doing good. I'm glad to be here. So the first time I ever run into you was on Al Profit page, man, and just going down through the whole Detroit history of gangsters and everything. And your story came up and seeing you talk, man, my mind is blown back. So I'm excited to capture your journey. Um, your upbringing, um, Nate Boone Craft, are you, where are you come up from? Where are you originally from? East side of Detroit. Mm. We came up from Mississippi, but I was born on the east side of Detroit. And uh, I mean, you know, <laughs> back then it was kind of rough and tough, but mm. I never was one to be a follower or hang out and play games. Yeah. Mm. I was all the way out there hustling. So I started hustling from the age of nine. Nine years old. I was old. out there selling heroin and shit with, up with this guy named Charlie. Charlie. And, uh, <laughs> by the time I turned 10, we had a falling out. What? Mm. Me and my friend, Jerm, I guess I can say his name because he's dead. He oh, passed man. away last year of COVID. That's amazing. But uh, we had to talk to him and we told him, hey, man, did this, man. You got to give us some more money. <laughs> I ain't giving y'all nothing. Y'all y'all should be happy that I'm letting you work. Mm. I said, we don't want bringing in your money. Right. I mean, you got to understand, these people ain't wouldn't paying you nothing. Right. When you hired me, what did you do? Tell me to go get the money from them. Mm -hmm. Did I not come back with the money? Right. So you did yes. your job. So you got to understand, we need more money. Mm -hmm. Now, either we give it to us or we're going to go our way and start our own shit. You talking about, you ain't going to do nothing. I'll beat y'all ass. That's one. Right. So what the fuck you mean one? I said, that's one. You don't threaten me and keep on thinking. Yeah, that's that's what he means by that's one is that's your first time. You only get three chances. It's three strikes and you out. That's one. <laughs> and that's your first strike. I will sit here and take it. Mm -hmm. He said, I beat both y'all. Friend James said, that's two. That's two. Three strikes and you out, buddy. He talking about what going to happen when you get to whatever number? You going to see. You find out. I'm going to, yeah. I Oh, 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 God, three strikes you out. If we got to say three, we ain't going to say it. You would never hear it. Yeah. <laughs> shit. We took that motherfucker out back and buried him in his backyard, went back in, took all his shit. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn. By the time they found that stinky body, the whole neighborhood was stinking. They were like, damn, something foul. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, shit. So, they yeah. over there laughing about committing a murder. That's insane. What? <laughs> Hold on now. That is insane. Well, I started at 10, start pushing that until I ran 10 out years of old. that he had. And then I talked to Frank and see if Frank would sell to me. I know I'm a kid, but you got to it's, look at my record, man. People out here knows me. Mm. And they know I'm going to get my money. And I'm going to give you yours, man. But I got yours up front. You're like, man, get your little. He start looking around like, like he been set up. Yeah. Mm. No, man, ain't no set up, man. What I'm going to do, I'm going to leave this bag on this table. Mm. 
There's a phone number there. Call me if you think that you can make something happen. I got up and walked away, and my friend was sitting behind him, which he didn't know, just in case he got stupid. Right. <laughs> we both walked out the door. Within like three hours, I got a call on that phone, rotary phone back then, yeah. you know. And he said, uh, listen, come back up there to that restaurant. I need to talk to you. I said, okay, I go up there, but he wasn't in there. He was sitting in the car. I'm like, he said, come on, get in. This don't sound right. I said, yeah, but my friend is with me. Said, come on. Damn, y'all two short motherfuckers. Mm. So, yeah. So we got in the car, drove around over on uh, Emerson, down by Pew. And he said, uh, you see that can over there? I said, yeah. Mm. I think somebody left something in there. So I tell him to go get it. Tell him to go over there and bed. He said, uh uh-uh, uh, you can't get back in the car with it. What you mean? <laughs> Ain't no thing. He said, give me a call when you are uh, ready to talk again. It's so mature. He never said the word drugs or anything. So we left, went back to uh, Tyler's house since he was, you know, deceased. So we used his house up for almost like three months before that body really started stinking. Wow. And we'll go there and cut it up, bag it up. Mm, put it out there at that time. So hold on, hold on, hold on. How are you going to go to somebody, so to a dead person's house, going up in there and doing your business? Ain't nobody coming to do no wellness checks. Ain't nobody coming like, oh, yeah, you ain't, you ain't even showing up to work. Ain't nobody, you know what I'm saying? Like, there's no way y'all operating out this house of a dead person and y'all not raising no suspicions. I mean, no sense. We decided to change the name to... Do to die. Mm. That people know you do this, you can die. But you better step on it a little bit because we ain't step on it. At all. Just that pure. Much. Oh, no, we yeah. stepped on it. But we didn't step on it that much. We might put a one or a two cut on it. Gotcha. But means. you better put the rest. People was loving it. They was looking around, hey, man, where that do to die? Because nobody <laughs> knew it was us until way later until, until I started selling to my sister friends. Yeah. And they went and told my sister, hey, your brother trying to beat me up. Probably going to show up in the video. He said, who? Pop? Willie? Who? And I'm like, no, nah, boom. Boom. My little brother? My baby brother? And, of course, when I come to Halloween, I'm like, did you threat Jerome? Who, me? <laughs> no. Why? Why would you think that? He said, because he came in talking about you threatening to beat his butt. I said, for what? And when she didn't say what for, I know he didn't tell her that he was shooting up hair around. Yeah. And yeah. he owed me money because I gave it to him on the credit. Yeah. So I waited and then he popped back up at my sister's house because I stayed with my sister every now and then. Popped back up. I said, check this out, man. You a goddamn rat. Mm. You can't talk to me like that. I said, that's one. Uh, here we I, go. I'm throw that to two. I heard about you and that counting. I said, mm. uh, I'm sure you did. And while I'm saying that, Jern came out the bathroom and was still behind him. He, he, he didn't know it until he heard that click in the back of his head. Click. Oh, my God. So don't turn around. That'll be three. Oh, then my God. Then I got to clean my sister flow. Yo, this dude right here is crazy. <laughs> What type of games does he play? What? You think he Jigsaw? Do I think he the Joker? What in the world? <laughs> but then, here come my sister out the kitchen. Trying to put his gun back up and sat down. We just sat there looking at the TV. Oh, nah. That's he a dangerous person right here. And then I said, yeah. Okay. And he shut it up. My sister, my, what's wrong? Nothing. This man is the devil right here. Boom. Jesus Christ. What's going on between you and Jerome? I say ain't nothing going on. He just mad at me because his girlfriend liked me. <laughs> you ain't nothing but 10, maybe 11. She's 16, 17. Said, How is he a 10, 11 year old out here really, really taking lives and, and 
putting fear into the hearts of many men. <laughs> like, what in the world, bro? Y'all know what I was doing at 10 and 11 years old, bro? I was playing with Legos. I was in my room all day, chilling, playing. Wait, was that? Yeah, 10 years old. Yeah, I was playing with Legos, bro. I was chilling, playing Minecraft, bro. This man out here hustling, killing people over here like, don't move. That'll be three. Then I got to clean my sister flow. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, I like him old like that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> He's stupid. And of course, I did have his girl. <laughs> oh, <laughs> shit. At she 10 years old? She There's liked no way. because I had that old black spade hair. Because my mother injured, so okay. I took out to her with the hair. <sighs> yeah, that picked me up from that until I got, I ain't quite sure what age I was when they locked me up in the youth home. So take it back just a little bit. How was it a 10-year-old? Like, what was your family dynamic that you end up being in the streets? Probably like, what terrible. was your, your mom, your dad, things of that nature, you know, growing up in the house? Well, mom had a big, well, there's a big family of us. Yeah. So mom was always working. Dad was working. Yeah. And when he wasn't working, he was in the Army. Yeah. But I didn't like the way I see my sisters and brothers in them working, coming home tired and beat. I don't want to look like y'all. So that's what made me go out there. And first I did legal stuff. I went out there and packed grocery bags, helped people carry them home. I shine shoes, I fix shoes. Mm -hmm. The man at the shoe store gave me that chance. He showed me how to fix the shoe, keep them shine and so forth. Then I started going up to, it's at Bilo. Back then there's a store called Bilo. It's and about that. We still got the, well, do we still got the bylaw? I remember I've seen a couple bylaws. I've been in a couple of them. Um, but I don't know if they still got the bylaw. But I remember having a bylaw, though. I remember those. So I used to go up there and hustle from there, tell people, I can put your bags in your car. I can carry them home because I know who you are. And I know where you live. They said, yeah, boom, we know you. You just a helpful little guy. I said, I try to be. <laughs> he playing they a role. give me money or cookies and stuff. Well, Money ain't cookie. Mm. Aggie used to always give me a big bag of cookie. We were like, she be baking her butt off, giving cookies to the kids in the neighborhood. But uh, yeah, I started off from that point because I didn't like to come home beat and shit like my sisters and brother were that working for Chrysler mm. and shit. And my sister worked there for the welfare department back okay. then. So I just said, well, I can make money if I go sell some of that stuff that these kids out here selling. Yeah. Then I found out what it was, Heron. Yeah. Uh, sat back and I watched them and observed them. Yeah. See where they was going. I said, okay. Get they, influenced. They got to be getting it from him. I didn't know he was a drug dealer. <clears throat> but when they left, I go up there and knock on the door. He come to the door and I tell him, hey, man, can I work for you? He said, who are you and why? Wait a minute, ain't you little boom, little two doors down? I said, yeah. Man, you too little for this. I said, size don't make a man. Mm. <laughs> so, of course, man, he said, man. Bro, I want to believe him so bad because he sound like, he sound like, like one of my, like somebody's favorite granddad or something. Like, I, I want to believe him so bad. But there's no way you a little child talking about some size don't make a man. Like who you been around? Like I, I get it, I get it. This is this is this is back in the day. It's probably a whole. It's probably how they did used to talk. It's probably how they. That's probably how they used to talk. But just going off of my childhood, I was not talking like that. I wasn't thinking like that. I didn't have that mindset, bro. I don't know, man, because I know your sister. I said, what they got to do with it? Is you gonna go tell her? Mm. He said, you kind of got a smart mouth. I said, no, I'm just telling you on how it lay out. Mm. Yeah. Give me the opportunity to show you. Give me some packs and let me go sell them. And then if I do a good job and people that owe you money, tell me about it. I go get the money for you. What you going well, to get How you going to get money? money from these big grown people? Yeah. I, I got my ways. What? Who, who, who did, how did you get that aggression? Like, cause I, you, I guess because when I was in school, they used to pick on me. Mm. And, um, I mean, I didn't like to fight, but after my sister told me, boy, you better not be running home no more. You better not be running from nobody. Either you fight them or you fight me. 
Mm. I'm going to fight them. Right. <laughs> I know my sister would beat the hell out of me. Yeah. She had reached up under the bed one day and pulled the bed up and beat the shit out of me because <laughs> I had, because I, I, I had snuck out the house. I used to tie the sheets together, keep them hidden under the bed. Then as soon as everybody gets settled in the house, I throw them out the window and clam down. Uh-huh. One day she found out that pulled the sheet up. Yeah. So when I get back, like, <laughs> Leroy. That's, oh, that was my little brother one year younger than me. Toss the sheet down. He's oh. He told me I bet not. <laughs> I said, well, you gonna listen to me, me or her? <laughs> I'm listening to Louise because Louise will beat me like she beat you. Oh man. I said, Ugh. so I go to the front door, knock on the door, and I told her that I was in the backyard. Nah, <laughs> you ain't no backyard. Said, Why you didn't come down? I, I did not want to. To disturb nobody. You you slick got a little slick little <laughs> mouth and talk about you, but I know you wasn't in the backyard because I looked out there on the back porch. I'm like, I probably was across the street at Jerry because my boy Jerry lived right across the street. Me and him grew up together. We were the same age. His mother and you know. I don't really got like I got I got older siblings, but I don't be around them like that. But like I'm glad I spent like most of my childhood by myself. Cause having to explain yourself to <laughs> having to explain yourself to your older sibling is the worst experience, bro. Having to sit there and explain why you did something stupid to somebody who also does stupid things, like <laughs> like why are you mad at me? You was doing the same <laughs> You was doing the same stuff. My sister used to always hang out together and shit. So that's how I got caught up in that situation, always sneaking out. And at nighttime is when is when the money was to be made. Yeah. Down there on Continental and Few, Jefferson and Continental, up and down Jefferson. I had to make money. So right. in this time, <clears throat> what year is this for you when you at 10 years old? 1967. So this is before oh, this is back in the, the riots day, day. and all of that, right? Yeah. So what was this the photo tr- ride? But doing a ride, man, we used to hit the stores. <laughs> My mama told y'all stay in this house. Don't you go out there? The people out there crazy. Okay. So she don't look. I go down in the basement, sneak out the side door. I'm going up there to the store. I'm walking. They said, "Hey, man, the damn window too small." And they looked over there and seen me. Come in, boom. What? We're gonna push it through the window and you open the door. You don't, okay. They pushed me through the window because I took my time by opening the door. I had to go open the cash register yeah. first. <laughs> <laughs> I got that money stuffed it down in my pants. Yeah, you got to get door, the money first. And they all run to the register to me. Man, up here's a coin. And look over at me. Look at me. <laughs> <laughs> I stand there and they talking about. Mm. You done took all the money out of the register. Listen, I would do the same Especially if I'm doing the more dangerous job, I'm taking all the money. N- not all the money. I'm gonna take. I'm taking the majority of the money, bro. Like for real. <laughs> like for real. All you, all you are, all you're doing is driving the car. I'm the one actually robbing the store. I'm getting the majority of this money. I don't care. Somebody get some bags or something. Let's bag up all. This. I said, turn, go get the cart. Man, him start loading the cart up. <laughs> <laughs> We run it down the street with the oh, with the food cart loaded. We take it to the side door. My uh, my my brother Willie and my sister and them there. So we push the door open. We just dump the cart up in there. <laughs> Yo, what the hell you doing? Just hide it. Just hide. I'm going to get some more. <laughs> so we run out the store and then I find out that they breaking into the gun shop. Oh shit! I'm like. Now he went on my gun. Did you take guns? They said, probably ain't no more in there. Me and Johnny went in there and we found them. <laughs> there about three boxes still underneath the counter that was up. We got them, threw them in the cart. Then we, load, then we loaded up. Uh, Man, where was the police? Where was the parents? Where was anybody of any authority? Like, what in the I get it. This is in the 60s. So I, I guess there's a lot of trust going around. But like Jesus Christ, this sounds like anarchy. Like what in the world? 
point arrows, knives, especially knives, because I love to play with knives. Mm. I play with knives since I was a little fella that I learned how to throw them, how to use them, and so forth. That's why I got the nickname Boom. Mm. Like Daniel Boom. Got you. Yeah. I don't so know I got that, that name, and uh, I loaded up with them. After we loaded up, took them back to the thing, we dumped that in. At that time, they was driving through the street with the bullhorn. Everybody inside, martial law and this and that. Then here come the army. Yep, yep. There we go. There we go. That's what I was looking for. I was looking for anybody of any authority <laughs> to show up, man. But I ain't going to lie to y'all, man. I got somewhere to be. So I'm going to go ahead and end this video here. Let me know if y'all need this part two. Go ahead and drop it in the comments. Do you need part two to this? Story right here, man. So far, I'm liking what he's talking about. He's interesting. You know what I'm saying? I don't know if I believe all of what he's saying, but I don't think he's lying either. So, if you guys like this video, this pretty cool video, leave a like, comment, and subscribe. Turn on post notifications. Share the video with all of your friends. And listen to some guys. I'm a hooligan, I can the fool again. I got that dog game and wood again. They can I handle him? I'm way too raw with it. You again if you got a problem, then you should say something. I've been trying to take all my enemies out, but they stay coming, never running. Facing all my issues like a grown man. I just want the money, I ain't into all the romance.